Hi, and welcome back to TUTV. I'm Parker. And I'm David. Hey, Parker, you're looking a little short this week. Uh, what happened? Yeah, well, I'm actually Lord Farquaad for Halloween, and so I decided to get surgery to be the same height as him. Oh, how, how was that process? Like, did, what did they have to do? It's very expensive, and there's only one doctor in the world who can do it, but I found him, so. Interesting. Yeah. Where, where did you have to travel? Like, where, where, where did that take you? A uh, far and mysterious land protected by mm. a, a dragon. So. Oh man, that's that's some commitment for uh, for for a costume. I, I mean, is Thank it you. reversible at least? Like, I you were pretty uh, good height before. I nah, nah. no. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so. but cool. Oh man. Stay that's tuned, and we'll reveal what David's costume is this episode. <laughs> Hello, welcome to TUTV. I'm Caden Ketcher. And I am the Plague Doctor. We've got lots of chilling tales tonight, so let's get right into them. President Biden courted controversy this week after making statements at a recent press conference that many interpreted to be contradictory to past American policies. The president said, quote, I've spoken with Xi about Taiwan. We agree we'll abide by the Taiwan agreement. We'll make it clear that we don't think he should be doing anything other than abiding by the agreement, end quote. These comments, among others, indicted, incited intense discussion as many commentators interpreted them as Biden adjusting U.S. policy towards Taiwan as to be more aggressive against Chinese power. White House Press Secretary Jen Paxani told reporters, quote, the president was not announcing any change in our policy nor has made any decision to change our policy. There is no change in our policy. Dr. Sayakia Dennis, a graduate of the Oklahoma University School of Community Medicine and founder of the Tulsa Birth Equity Initiative, is putting in efforts to change racial maternal health disparities. Tulsa Birth Equity Initiative started in late 2019 as a community-based doula program that provides doula services to expecting parents. The organization also trains individuals to provide doula services on their own and to share the news of inequalities black and indigenous women face in maternal issues. Dennis said, quote, I think specifically when you're looking at marginalized populations, indigenous people, black people, you definitely have to look at social determinants and structural determinants of health. The current American labor shortage is affecting many areas of work, including the medical sector. Yugi no Gucci, an NPR health correspondent, stated in an interview that, quote, a lot of nurses have been leaving their, their jobs, likely due to being pushed out of overwhelmingly caseloads during the pa pandemic. The quote, Noguchi then further discussed the competitive atmosphere produced by the nursing programs at the undergraduate level. Later in the interview, the host expressed that these barriers should be removed since nurses are needed now more than ever. Two children were killed and seven people were injured during a drag race outside of San Antonio, Texas. The crash happened at approximately 3 p.m. on October 23rd. The type of drag race that was being put on the time of the tragedy was a no-prep drag race. These drag races typically take place on unprepared and on non-busy roads. This type of drag racing is controversial and is widely considered extremely dangerous in the drag racing world. Kerrville police are currently investigating the incident. A duo of 19-year-olds split $3 million this week in Tennessee after winning, after winning numbers on the lottery ticket. Wyatt Close and Brandon Thompson stopped at a Quick Trip store where they bought the lottery tickets. According to Thompson, the first ticket was a non-winner. However, the second ticket encompassed the $3 million prize. 
Close and Tom Thompson said they plan to split the prize and have intentions of saving their winnings and building homes. So, Mr. Plug Docker, um, what, do you have any plans for this Halloween? Just the usual. I'll be feeding my leeches. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, no trick-or-treating for you, I guess? Uh, no, but I've got plenty to give um, <laughs> this Halloween season because of the pandemic I've heard about. Plenty of people will need their medicine. Yeah. You know, bone saws, syringes. It's a leeches. popular time. It's a lucrative time for you, I would assume. It's wonderful for me. Well, that's all we have this week, folks. Hi, and welcome back to another interview with TUTV. I'm Parker. I'm Liza. So Liza, what organization are you representing today? I'm here on behalf of TU Student Afghan Assistance. Okay, cool. So when did that start and what role did you play in it? Yeah, so about a month ago um, when TU um, announced that they would be housing um, people coming over from Afghanistan, some students got together and we started meeting weekly um, to sort of workshop ways that we could um, best assist our new Afghan neighbors. Cool, nice, awesome. Are there any events coming up that we should know about? Yeah, so a week from this Wednesday, so that will be November 3rd, Wednesday, November 3rd, we are having a movie night at the football field. Um, we'll be playing the movie Coco, and it is going to be a fundraiser um, so that we can raise money to purchase items um, such as hygiene and household, household items for our new neighbors. Hmm. Um, admission is $5, and that gets you not only into the movie, but also um, we have snacks. We have hot chocolate and popcorn and candy, so it should be a fun night. Awesome. Yeah, I actually haven't seen Coco, and uh, it's for a good cause. I'll definitely be there. Yeah, certainly. And another thing students should know as well is, um, since it is on the football field, if you would like a comfortable experience, we suggest you bring um, a blanket to sit on or a chair to sit on, yeah. Yeah, nice. And then, so let's say a student can't make it um, and they still want to donate to help out, how can they do that? Yeah, certainly. So if you check the description below, um, there is a link um, and we can link the GroupMe and then also the um, uh, Venmo account so that students can donate. Um, we've set up an account um, so that students can donate to this Venmo um, and then we'll use those funds to um, purchase the items. Awesome. Awesome. And then, so that's how they would donate. And then to get involved, they would just join the GroupMe link? Yeah, so they can join the GroupMe link. And again, we have weekly meetings every Monday at 7 p.m. in Great Hall B of the Student Union. Um, so they can come to those as well and find out more. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then, um, so it's Wednesday, so it's November 3rd on the football field. What time? 7.30 p.m. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking, Liza. Thank you, Parker. Sweet. Happy well, Halloween. Yeah, be <laughs> sure to be there. Hello, welcome to TUTV. I'm Catherine. And I'm Erin. We've got some exciting stories this week, so let's jump right into it. The Houston Astros advanced to the World Series following a 5-0 victory in Game 6 of the ALCS against the Boston Red Sox. Houston's last World Series appearance in 2017 ended with a win, but was marred by a sign-stealing controversy. The Astros' Jordan Alvarez hit a double in the bottom of the first inning to bring Alex Bregman home to give Houston the early 1-0 lead. In the bottom of the sixth, Houston's Carl Tucker grounded into a double play, but the hit allowed Alvarez to score to build the lead to 2-0. Houston's Carl Tucker hit a three-run homer in the bottom of the eighth inning to give the Astros the decisive 5-0 win and cement their World Series appearance. The Astros will face the Atlanta Braves in the World Series, who beat the Los Angeles Dodgers 4-2 in the NLCS. Tulsa men's soccer beat Memphis 5-0 last Friday. Tulsa came into the game ranked 11th nationally in the United Soccer Coaches Poll with a 10-1 record. Alex Menhard scored the first four goals for Tulsa. He scored the lone goal in the first half with an assist from Tom Protozek. Menhard scored two goals early in the second half for the 
hat trick, then logged his fourth goal with a penalty kick in the 61st minute. Ben Barkley finished Tulsa's dominant performance with a goal in the 88th minute, assisted by Austin Schweinert in the win. Minhard became the first Tulsa player since 1991 and the fourth in the school history to score four goals in a game. Tulsa women's soccer lost 0-2 to two at SMU last Sunday. TU had a 6-7-2 to seven to two record going into the game following a 2-2 two to two tie with ECU. SMU's two goals came in the first half, with Alina Khan scoring the 19th minute with the assist from Lindsay Whitmore. Whitmore then scored a goal of her own in the 26th minute to give SMU the 2-0 lead. Despite allowing two goals, Tulsa goalkeeper Emma Molsey had eight saves in the game. SMU controlled the game offensively with a 10-4 advantage in shots on goal and a 15-7 advantage in total shots. Tulsa's final game of the season will be at home against Houston as the Golden Hurricane looks for their second win in conference play. Tulsa women's volleyball won at Temple 3-0 this past Friday. Tulsa had 10 wins on the season going into the game with five of those being conference wins. Tulsa eased through the first set with a 25-19 win. Temple played much closer in the second set, but Tulsa prevailed with a narrow 25-23 win. Tulsa was down 18-23 near the end of the third set, but came back to win the set 25-23 in the match 3-0. Errors were costly for Temple, although they had held a 45-40 advantage in kills. They also had 23 errors to Tulsa's 13, allowing TU to get their 11th win of the season. Max Verstappen won the U.S. Grand Prix this past Sunday and built his championship lead to 12 points over rival Lewis Hamilton. Verstappen came into the race on pole position after narrowly edging out Hamilton in qualifying on Saturday. Hamilton took the lead multiple times throughout the race, but Verstappen retook it and was able to hold Hamilton off in the final laps to give himself a win that could be critical in the championship race. Verstappen's Red Bull teammate Sergio Perez finished third, finishing 10 seconds above Ferrari's Charles Leclerc in fourth. Hamilton and Verstappen will continue their title fight November 7th at the Mexico City Grand Prix. So have you gone to see any of the soccer games? Yes, I actually went to the women's soccer game when they played ECU. Oh, yeah. great, great. Uh -huh. And I've been to a few of the men's soccer games. They're looking really good. Yes, they're eighth yeah. now, aren't yes. they? Ranked eighth. Yeah. That's great. It just came out today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've um, been going to see mainly the men's soccer. I really want yeah. to go see the women's mm -hmm. against Houston. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they're doing great, and I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to see how they do. Yes. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching. Stay warm. We'll see you next time. Hello, welcome to TU TV. I'm DJ. And I'm Rocky Balboa. We've got some exciting stories this week, so let's jump right into it. Helena Hutchins tragically passed away last Thursday after being shot by a prop gun while on the set of the upcoming movie Rust in New Mexico. Hutchins graduated from the American Film Institute in 2015 and was working as the film cinematographer. Alec Baldwin, a famous actor and producer, was handling the gun before firing it, firing it during a rehearsal, unfortunately hitting both Hutchins and the film's director. No charges have been filed against Baldwin at this time, and Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office is still investigating the accident. Celebrity Restaurant, a longtime local favorite, which closed in July due to staffing shortages, has announced that it will open its doors for one more holiday season. According to a post, to the restaurant's Facebook page, Celebrity Restaurant will reopen its doors until December 31st when it plans to close indefinitely. Celebrity Restaurant originally opened in 1963 as a private club to bypass the state's restrictive liquor laws, but became a Tulsa staple for its decorative interior and menu. The restaurant will be open for, di for dinner from Tuesdays to Saturdays every week. Denis Villanueva's latest film release, Dune, debuted this past Thursday and racked in $40.1 million at the U.S. box office during its opening weekend. Dune, the second film adaptation of Frank Herbert's 1965 novel, premiered both in theaters and online streaming service HBO Max last Thursday. 
Jeff Goldstein, chief producer for Warner Brothers, estimated that the box office sales would have been roughly 20% higher if the movie was released only in theaters. The star dub cast of Dune includes Timothy Chalamet, Cindaya, Rebecca Ver Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, and Jason Mahone, among many others. British pop star Ed Sheeran shared his, this past Saturday on social media that he has officially contracted COVID-19. In a post to his Instagram page, Sheeran confirmed that he was self-isolating and following all government procedures to keep himself and his loved ones safe. Sheeran also announced that he would continue some performances from his home. This news comes just a few days before the release of his latest album titled Equals. The Woody Guthrie Museum in Tulsa is now hosting an exhibit focusing on country music and the powerful impact that women had in shaping its culture. The exhibition titled Stronger Together, The Power of Women in Country Music was created at the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles and is making its second stop at the Woody Guthrie Museum. Kelsey Goals, the associate cur curator of the Grammy Museum said, quote, we wanted to highlight the triumphs of women in country music and how they have had a dominant influence on this music from the very beginning, end quote. Stronger Together will be on display in Tulsa until April 4th, 2022. So I, I heard about that Helena Hutchins story. That yes, was really upsetting. That's yeah. very tragic. Um, yeah, hopefully everything gets sorted out in that. Yes, I really hope. I, I feel for the family and everybody involved. That's yeah, very, it's really unfortunate because, I mean, that's... That, that happens quite often with a prop gun. That's it's really unfortunate. What? Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. But that's all we have for this week, folks. Thank you. All right. So, David, the people yeah. want to know, what is your costume? Well, see, I am actually the ghost of an Anaheim tourist. Uh, I, I got this, uh, this sweatshirt here um, at a thrift store. And uh, ever since then, it's been whispering things in my ear as I, as I speak, uh, as, as, as I wear it. And, um, you know, I, I, the guy's name was Bill, um, and you know, I, he instructed me to dress up for him as Halloween. So as, as you can see, the red shorts and the Anaheim um, sweatshirt are his usual garb. Cool. What kinds yeah. of things does Bill talk to you about? Uh, most of the time, Bill just is telling me to go to Disneyland. I'm pretty sure he had season passes when he was alive, so he, he just he spent a lot of his time there. I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why he's got an obsession. I, I think that's maybe why he was an Anaheim tourist. He probably came there a lot. So That's kind of convenient. Yeah, I kind of no. wish that I had a uh, haunted shirt that I could talk to when I'm bored. Oh, it's, it's more of like a one-way communication. It's more of like Disneyland. Disneyland, you know, like uh, slowly in cadence uh, over time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, you know, at least you have something to listen to while you're walking. Across. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it gets annoying sometimes. I'm in class and I'm just thinking about how much fun it would be to, to ride the Space Mountain. But, yeah. you know, unfortunately, that's, that's, the, that's the price to pay for this sweatshirt. So. Speaking of prices to pay, did you know that if you're a TU student, you don't have to pay for Caneflix? Caneflix includes all of the Harry Potter movies and also has a ton of horror movies. So if you're looking to watch a horror movie on Halloween, Kinflix is the place to go. Delete all of your other subscriptions to every single streaming service and just use Kinflix. This episode was sponsored by Kinflix. Yes. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week. I'll miss you. <laughs>